This is module 15, um, which is on electric circuits, and we'll do the first part of that module um, in this video and finish up um, in a, another part. So, um, as I said, this visit this um, module is on electric circuits. So in the last module, we um, we studied um, getting electrical charges to move by creating an electric field using stationary charges. Well, another way that you can get charges moving um, is to use a battery. And I'm not going to say a lot about batteries um, because we stu you study those in chemistry. Um, but I will review a little bit. So a battery is basically two chemicals. Um, and those two chemicals are separated from each other. Um, and those, those two chemicals, um, one of the chemicals wants to gain electrons, and the other um, wants to um, lose electrons. So these are the chemicals that are in the battery and, and you know gaining and losing electrons that should make some sense to you um, based on what on the chemistry that you've studied. So one wants to gain electrons and one wants to lose electrons. So um, when you connect those two chemicals then the electrons will flow and they will flow from the chemical that wants to lose electrons to the chemical that wants to gain electrons. And when that happens, then you have created um, an electric circuit. Um, batteries are, most of the batteries that we use um, in the devices that we use in our homes are either 1.5 volt. So if you have like a double A battery or a triple A battery, a C, D battery, those are all, so all of the, the kind of um, round um, or oval, round or uh, cylinder shaped batteries are one and a half volts. Um, and then the, the kind of rectangular batteries that have the, um, the, can't think of what they're called. The um, they have the the two things on the end. Those are those are nine volt batteries. So those typically are used in like smoke detectors in homes. So what what do these mean? Well. The, the voltage is the potential difference between the positive and negative side. So um, as charges move from one side of the battery to the other, then that means that you're getting a change in the electric potential. Um, and of course, we've seen before that um, if you get a change in the electric potential, so that's V, so a change in the electric potential leads to a change in potential energy because this 
this is the charge of the particle, and that's not going to change. So if you change the electric potential, you're going to change the um, potential energy. And then, of course, we also lost, saw last semester that, or last module, that if you change the potential energy, then you are also going to change the kinetic energy. Um, and then um, that, of course, allows, we can use that energy, that energy of moving particles to do work. So the more volts that a battery has, the, um, the more kinetic energy the electrons have. So more volts, equals more kinetic energy. Um, and then that kinetic energy, as we said, can be used to do work. So more voltage means that each electron can do more work. Now you can also increase the amount of work that can be done by increasing the number of electrons. So, so besides um, besides increasing the voltage, if you increase the number of electrons, um, you're also going to be able to do more work. Um, and that should make sense. It should make sense that you can, um, that 10 electrons are going to be able to do more work than one electron. Um, so you, we increase our increase the kinetic energy and the ability to do work by either increasing the voltage or by increasing the number of electrons. So um, then based on that information then we have electric current. Um, An electric current is just the number of electrons that are tra it's, it's an expression of the number of electrons that are traveling in a circuit. circuit. Um, and so um, it, it's actually uh, electric current is actually the amount of charge traveling um, in an electric circuit per second. So the amount of charge traveling in an electric circuit per second. So that is current, um, and in terms of expressing that mathematically, um, the expression is that I is equal to delta Q over delta T, and I stands for current. So I is current, um, delta Q is the total charge that is, that is traveling past a given point. Delta T is the time that it takes for that charge to travel. So in terms of units, well, um, we know that Delta Q is going to be in Coulombs, because that's the unit for charge. 
and time is going to be in seconds. So um, that means that we have coulombs per second, um, and we refer to that as an amp ampere, ampere, or we just call it an amp. Okay, so current, the units for current um, is an amp, and it is a coulomb per second. Okay, so then um, we can then um, look at what a simple circuit might look like. So we have a battery. Um, and that battery has a positive terminal and a negative terminal. And those two terminals are connected uh, with a wire. So the electrons are going to travel from the negative side of the battery to the positive side of the battery. Um, so they're going to try. It's going to travel from the chemical that wants to give up um, its electrons to the chemical that wants to accept those. Um, electrons. Now, to make things simpler, um, electric circuits are drawn using a long line and a short line. So we use a long line to represent the positive terminal on a battery, and we use a short line to represent the negative, and then we draw our electric circuit like this. So um, when you draw your electric circuits, um, you just know that the, po the long line represents the positive side and the short line represents the negative and therefore we do not include the signs in there. So the current, as we said, as we already said, the current flows from the negative um, side of the battery to the positive side of the battery. However, um, Ben Franklin, um, Ben Franklin uh, had the idea. So batteries were developed and were being used um, before we really understood how they worked and we didn't really know about electron we didn't know about electrons so um, Ben Franklin had the idea that batteries had a positive and a negative side and he also had the idea that electricity flowed from one side to the other but he thought that the positive side of the battery had too many particles and the negative side had too few particles so um, he said that the particles flowed from positive to negative. We know now that that's not true, but um, before the discovery of electrons, it was pretty impressive that Ben Franklin understood that electricity was due to these particles flowing. So um, based on Ben Franklin's idea that the charges flow from um, a pause from positive to negative, um, el electric circuits were drawn showing that electricity flowed from the positive to the negative. Um, now, if now we know that now that we know about electrons, we know that current results from the movement of electrons and that they flow from the negative to the positive. However, because these electric circuit drawings had been drawn the other way for so long, they continue to be drawn in that way. So even though we know that current flows from negative to positive, we draw electric circuits as if it flows from positive to negative. So 
um, when we draw an electric circuit in order to show the flow of the current through the circuit, we draw it from as if it is going from the positive to the negative. And that is called conventional current. So we know that it really goes from negative to positive, but we draw it as if it goes from positive to negative. Um, now, I, the, this dotted dashed line is, is used to show the direction of the flow of the current. Um, realize, of course, that it, it is flowing. It's not flowing on the inside. It's flowing through the wire. Um, but in order to be able to show it, um, we draw it as a dash line inside. OK, so let, um, let's look at on your own 15.1. And on your own 15.1 just gives you a drawing and it says draw the current in the following circuit. So the drawing looks like this. Okay, so the drawing looks like that. So we know that the, um, the longer line is the positive, the shorter line is the negative. And so um, in order to draw this with conventional current, which we will do um, because that's what is done um, everywhere, we would draw the current as if it flows from the positive to the negative. So we would draw arrows pointing from the positive to the negative. That would be conventional current. Okay, so we are interested in knowing how much current flows in an electrical circuit. Um, and conductors, um, all conductors, resist the flow of electrons to some extent. So even though they're good conductors of electricity, um, they do resist the flow of electrons to some extent. And each um, Each um, conductor has its own resistance, and that, um, that resistance is based on the type of material. So just some types of um, materials are offer more resistance to the flow of electrons than others. Um, and then it, it also is based on the width of the um, of the conductor. So um, a thin wire offers more resistance than a thick wire. And if you think about that, uh, that should make sense because um, if you have electrons trying to move, um, if they're trying to move through a thin wire, um, it's like trying to to move water through a, um, a thin a thin straw versus a thick hose. Um, there's going to be less resistance to the flow of the electrons if the wire is thick compared to thin. And then the other thing that will affect the resistance, so besides the type of material and the width, the other thing is the length. Um, and in this case, the longer um, wire offers more resistance 
than a sh than short one. And I, you know that's just based on the fact that it it just has a it has a longer distance to traverse, and that therefore you're going to get um, a greater resistance. So. Um, how do we determine the resistance that um, that a conductor has to the flow of electrons? Well, there, the equation that we use for that is that um, electric potential, the volt, is equal to I times R. Okay, so this is a volt. I, we already said, is current, and that is measured in amps. Um, and resistance is measured in a unit that is called an ohm. Um, it's named after a um, German physicist who um, first developed or first discovered the idea of resistance. And it, you, an ohm is signified by the Greek letter omega. So R is in ohms, signified by the Greek, la Greek letter omega. So um, if, we, if we wanted to solve for R here, so if V equals I times R, then V over I equals R. So V is in volts and I is in amps. So that tells us that a volt divided by an amp is an ohm, which is the unit for resistance. Okay, so a volt divided by an amp um, is a an ohm. Okay, so let's talk then about how this relates to electrical devices. So um, electrical devices, let's think about a toaster. It works because um, a material has been used to make it that has a certain amount of resistance. So um, as that um, as the electrons flow through that material, the kinetic energy gets converted to heat and it gets converted to light. So in a toaster, the toaster glows red because the kinetic energy has been converted to light and it gets warm and, and toasts your bread because it, the, some of that kinetic energy has been converted to heat. So... Um, a an electric device in this in its simplest form is just a voltage source that is connected to a resistor. So this is an electrical device, and a simple electrical device. Um, and we will draw that um, electrical force. The electric source could be a battery, but all, it, you know, in many in many cases, it's a wall socket. Um, so the way we would draw then a electrical uh, the, the circuitry of a simple electric device, we have our positive and our negative. Um, and then this uh, zigzag line is used to represent the resistor. Okay, so this is the uh, power source over here, or the, the voltage source. Would that be a battery or plugged into a wall? And this is the resistor. And again, the, the electrons would flow from the negative side. The current's going to flow from the negative to the positive side. It's going to flow from the negative 
to the positive. However, we draw it as if it as if the current is flowing from the positive to the negative. So um, when those electrons travel through this resistor, those resistors are going to impede the flow of the electrons. It's going to create resistance. Um, and that gets converted then to heat and light. So now there, this is a wire. So this is just a wire here. And there will be some, there, any, any material is going, is any, any, no matter what that wire is made out of, um, it's going to have some resistance to the flow of the electrons. But the resistance in the wire is going to be small compared to the resistance in the resistor. And therefore, we just ignore um, that amount of, um, we just ignore the resistance in the wire itself and just concern ourselves with the resistor. So let's look, let's see how we can apply this then. Um, we'll look at example 15.1. And that this problem tells us that uh, we have a space heater. And um, the resistance for that space heater is 11 ohms. And we are told that the power um, is plugged into a wall socket. And the wall socket is 120 volts. OK, and then um, the question that we are asked then is, what is the current flowing through that circuit? OK, so um, we know that, well, first of all, we're asked to draw it. So um, if we were to draw it, we'll have our positive and our negative um, ends of the, of the electric source. And over here, we will have the resistor. And so it, so it would look like that. And we would draw the elect, we would draw the flow of current using a dotted line um, as if it is flowing from the positive to the negative side. So from the long line to the short line. Okay, so that's how we would draw. Oh, and then we would we would label it. So we would write we would put the resistance over here as being equal to 11 ohms, and we would put the voltage over here. It's 120 volts. Okay, so that's how you would draw the um, circuit for the heater, um, and and how you would indicate the flow the direction of the flow of the current. Okay, then we know that. Um, V is equal to I times R. And we are asked, what is the current? That's I. So V divided by R is equal to I. So um, V was 120 volts. And the resistance we were given was 11 ohms. So uh, let me show. Let's, so remember that an ohm. Um, we said that an ohm is equal to V divided by A, voltage divided by amps. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in as that, so that you can see the units. So an ohm is V divided by A. So your V's are going to cancel, and the units you're left with is amp, which is what you should have for um, for current. So then the answer that you should get is that you should get that the current is 11 amps. Um, and that is a, that's a lot of amperage. Um, so space heaters run on a very high amp. If we, if you wanted to know how many Remember, we said that current is an expression of how many electrons are flowing through um, an electric circuit. 
So if we, if we know that the current is 11 amps, um, one number that was thrown out um, in the last chapter, yeah, in the last chapter was that one electron um, is um, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Okay, so one electron is has this charge on it. Well, then if we have, if, and if we have 11 amps of current, an amp is a coulomb per second. Okay, so we'll put 11 coulombs per second. So your coulombs are going to cancel. And this means that um, if if current is, if you have 11 can amps of current, that means that you have this many electrons moving through that circuit every second. So 6.9 times 10 to the 19 electrons per second. So that many electrons travel from the negative to the positive side of the circuit every single second. So that's a tremendous number of electrons and gives you an idea of the tremendous current that is flowing through there. Okay, let's go ahead and do um, on your own 15.2. So um, in on your own 15.2, we are given that an electrician measures 0 0.023 amps um, of current. And they give us a drawing of the cir circuit. And, and we are to draw the current flow and determine the resistance. OK, so here is the circuit that we are given. And we are told that this is equal to 15.3 volt. So the voltage is 15.3. And then the direction of the current flow, we would draw the direction of the current flow as if it's going from positive to negative. So we would draw it like this, with our arrows pointing in this direction as if it is flowing positive to negative, even though we know it's really flowing negative to positive. OK, so um, what is the resistance? Well, V, the voltage, is equal to the current divided by the resistance. And therefore, voltage divided by current is going to give us the resistance. So the voltage was 15.3 volts. And the current was 0 0.023 amps. That's going to be equal to R. And so what you end up with, with two significant figures, you will end up at 670 volts over amps. And we said earlier that a volt over an amp is a as an ohm. So the resistance is 670 ohms. Okay, so that is on your own 15.2. And that um, that is our dis uh, part of our discussion on resistance. We'll get back to doing a little bit more um, next week. Okay, then um, the next thing we want to look at then is um, power. So, um, We've looked at power before, um, and we said that power was the amount of energy per second. We looked at power when we were studying work um, last long time ago, last semester. And we said that power is expressed in the units of watts. 
So, um, and, and we said that a watt um, is equal to a joule per second. So if you have a 100 watt light bulb, um, that tells you that that bulb is, um, the power for that bulb is 100 joules um, per second, 100 joules of energy per second. So the higher the power, the more energy per second. Okay, so increase power, equals increased energy per second. Okay. Um, and the we have a couple equations actually to calculate electric power and which one you use depends on uh, what information you have available. So that there are two equations. The first one is that power is equal to current times the electric potential. Okay, so power, um, we measure power in watts and we measure current in amps. And the electric potential is measured in volts. So an amp time of times a volt then must be equal to a watt. Okay. Um, so that's one equation that you can use to calculate power. Um, and we'll we'll do some examples here in a moment. The other equation for power is that power is equal to the current squared times the resistance. So current is measured in amps, so amps squared times ohms. Will equal um, power, which is a watt. Okay, so a watt is an amp times a volt, or it's an amp squared times an ohm. So let's look at some examples of, of applying um, these two equations, and, I, and as I said, it, which one you use really depends on the information that you are given. So um, P equals IV or P equals I squared R. Okay, so in the first example, if we know that we have an electric circuit that's 120 volts and that uh, it's um, current is 11 amps, what is the power? Okay, so power is equal to I times V. So it's going to be equal to 11 amps times 120 volts. Um, and that with, your, we can have two significant figures. So that is going to be equal to 1.3 times 10 cubed amps times volts or watts. Um, when you do this math, it actually comes out to 1,320, but with two significant figures, you can either write it as 1,300 watts or as 1.3 times 10 cubed watts. Okay, so that's one um, example of the calculation for power. Um, and the other, another one then is if we have, um, we are given um, an electric circuit. Um, this, the, the, if you have a motor, that draws 1.19 amps of current. And that the resistance 
is equal to 101 ohms. Um, if we assume that the motor is 100% efficient, what is its power output? Okay, so now we have we have current and we have resistance. So then we would use the other equation um, to determine the power. So power is I squared times R. Okay, so I is 1.19 amps. We will square that times 101 ohms. And um, if you do that math, you should get um, 143.0261. Um, and we can have three significant figures. So our answer would be 143 amps squared times ohms, which is a watt. So 143 watts. Now, one thing that this problem said is it said to assume 100% efficiency for the motor. So that means that all of the current that is being drawn, um, all, the, all of the current that the motor is drawing is actually going into um, producing power. Well, we know that there is no machine that is 100% efficient. You're always going to lose some of that um, energy to heat. Uh, and in fact, most, most of the motors that humans make um, and even the human body in the, the, the um, processes within the human body are only about 20% efficient. So that means that 80% of the energy that, or the power that is exerted actually goes into doing work and the um, eight, the other 80% just gets wasted as heat. Um, so any, any kind of motor that you run, you know it's gonna produce heat. Um, and so no, they, even though it, it's going, many of other problems that we do are going to tell us to assume 100% um, efficiency in the motor, um, they are actually not 100% efficient. Okay, so let's look at on your own 15.4. And that problem, well, actually, I've, uh, sorry, I've, we've, let's do port 15.3 first. Okay, so 15.3 tells us that we have a heater. and that it is rated to draw 13 amps. Um, and it has a resistance of 9.3 ohms. And so the question we are asked, if you assume 100% efficiency, how much power does it produce? Okay, so here we have, we're given the current, which is I, and we're given the resistance, which is R. So then in calculating power, we would use this equation, I squared R. So this would be 13 amps times 13 amps times the resistance, which is 9.3 ohms. And so what you should get for the power then is 1,571.7, and it's gonna be amps squared ohms, which is a watt. Um, and with two significant figures, we would have to say then that this is 1,600 watts. Then we can do on your own uh, 15.4. And that one tells us that we have an electric motor 
that runs on a 1.5 volt battery. And it draws um, 0.32 amps of current. Okay, so the, this is the voltage and this is the current I. So we know our other equation is that power is equal to I times V. So 0 0.32 amps times 1.5 volts will give us 0 0.48 amps times volts, which is a watt. So you can, if you just look at those 15.3 and 15.4, uh, we had a pretty big difference um, in terms of the power. In the first one, we had 1,600 watts coming from an electric heater. Um, and in the second one, that was a, a motor just running on a battery, uh, we only had 0.48 watts of power. Okay, just a couple more things, and we will fin we'll be finished with this module. Um, and we're, we're going to start on our discussion of switches and currents. We'll finish up with this next time. Um, so when we are drawing a circuit, Okay, so that's just a simple circuit. Um, another one here. Okay, so again, the current would flow from the negative to positive, but we would draw it as if it drew as if it uh, flowed from the positive to the negative. Well. Um, When drawing circuits, um, we indicate the switch um, like I have drawn here on the left. So this indicates that the switch is open. And so when the switch is open, the we've broken the connection that would allow the um, current to flow through from one side to the other. So if it starts here and it flows through the resistor, but then when it gets here, it, it we've stopped its ability to flow to the other side um, of the power source. And therefore, since there is no connection between the two sides, the current cannot flow. So if, um, if you think about the light switch in your house, when the light is off, that is because this, the circuit is open and therefore the current cannot flow um, through that circuit. And then this is this, the one on the right would indicate a closed circuit. So the two sides are connected and current can flow. So when the when when the light switch is on, um, the circuit is closed and the current can flow um, through that circuit. Okay, last thing that we want to talk about then um, is the difference between um, a circuit that is in series and a circuit that is parallel. So a series circuit, and then we'll do a parallel circuit.
So, and I'm very, I'm a very poor drawer, but let, let's say we have a battery, and these are the battery um, terminals or posts. And then we have a, um, we have a wire connected to that battery and current is going to flow, okay? So then what if we have two light bulbs here? So here's one light bulb. And then over here we have another one. Um, and then these two are kind of connected like that, okay? So um, if we have this, this is called, this is, um, this is device. This is showing devices that are connected to each other in series. So you may know that in a light bulb there is a filament. So um, the light bulb will continue to work as long as the filament is still um, is still unbroken. So if we have a light bulb like this. And there is a filament in here. And as long as that filament um, is not broken, the light bulb will light. But what if we have, uh, what happens when a light bulb burns out is that that filament gets broken. And so the, the, when, when the filament is broken, then the light can no longer work. So what if we have a light, this light bulb, the filament is working, um, but it, or it is intact, but in this one, the filament is broken. Um, well, in in this case, um, as the current, there in order in order to get current, um, you have in order to get the flow of current, you have to have um, a connection that flows. You have to have the the the, um, the 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 circuit has to be able to complete itself. So in this case, even though this one is, um, this light bulb is okay, the current um, cannot flow through this whole cycle. It can't flow from one side to the other because it this um, will interrupt the flow of the current. So this is basically like an open circuit. And... Um, neither one of these light bulbs, the circuit cannot be completed, and so neither one of those um, light bulbs will light because the flow of the current is not able to, it's going it, to, it can't complete its cycle to get over to this other side because of this broken um, light bulb on this side. Um, if you've ever seen Christmas lights, where when one light bulb um, burns out, they all burn out, that's because they are connect. That whole string of lights is connected in series. So if one burns out, you interrupt the whole circuit, um, and the the current cannot flow through that string of lights, and so none of them will light. Okay. So then the other way that we can um, Connect multiple devices is called um, a parallel circuit. And in a parallel circuit, we'd have our battery with our terminals on it. Um, and now, um, if we have our two light bulbs, we can have one. Um, in here, and then we can have another one oh. move this whole thing down. Okay, so here's our battery on here with our terminals, and we have one light bulb there, and then we have another one up here. Okay, so now um, if this light bulb is, if its filament is still intact but this one isn't, um, 
this light bulb will not, so the current, this light bulb um, would not light because that you can't complete the circuit. However, the other one um, still has a way to complete the circuit so it can flow through this bulb and it can still get back to the other side of the battery. So the other light bulb will still work because there's still a complete circuit. This one won't work, but this one can still work if its filament is still intact. So it can, it's able to complete the circuit and that is um, called a parallel circuit. Okay, we're going to stop there um, and we will pick up with um, more discussion about series and parallel circuits next week.